Hi everyone, I'm Danny. Welcome to Every Which Way. I'm hitting a trail near my house looking for mushrooms. Let's see what we can find today. So this is a flush of Mycena hematopus, also known as the bleeding Mycena. I'm gonna see here if I can show you why it's called that. You can see this one that I just cut here. Looks like it has a red, dark, blood-like substance coming out of it. These are very fun to play with. Obviously it's actually not blood, but still very cool. So you can see it actually exudes this red blood-like substance. I also wanted to try to zoom in and show you this Mycena has a little bit of Spinellus mold or Mycena mold growing on it. You can barely see it, but there's almost like a webby, hairy-like substance right on the edge of this cap. That is Spinellus fusiger. It is a mold taking over the Mycena. One thing I've been just willing to accept about foraging is that I will always go home with sexy forest legs. Ooh, baby. All natural, baby, that's what we like. This beautiful fungus is in the genus Dacrymyces and I would narrow this down to likely be the species Chrysospermus. These are often lumped into a group that some call witch's butter, but there are multiple species that can be referred to as witch's butter, including Tremella mesenterica, which is a bit more brainy and less leggy than this Dacrymyces species. And although these are technically edible, they aren't delicious enough that I would suggest going out of your way to consume, but they sure are fun to look at. Artist conch. This is named Ganoderma aplanatum. Um, this one looks to be a few years old. They're younger and more fresh. This is mostly brown. This has been sun bleached a little bit. Um, and then there's a brown powder. You can kind of see remnants of it right here um, on the cap. And then underneath, as a lot of people may already be aware, the fertile surface is tight pores, and you can actually draw on this surface, and it will dry that way and stay. But each year, it'll add, if it stays alive, another layer of pore surface. So the drawing that was on here before was, I think it was a, like a picture of a pumpkin, a jack-o-lantern see that that is now gone. So these are edible as a tea and I have heard that a Ganoderma aplanatum tea can help you sleep so I have collected some this year and I plan on trying it so I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so I put my water bottle here so you can see the size of this beast. Um, I believe it's a bleed. I'll pick it in a moment, but I wanted you to see the cap. There is a lot of rose combing going on. Rose combing is when on the cap of a mushroom you can see bits of the fertile surface starting to form on the cap. So let's flip this baby over and check it out. Okay, so I didn't want to keep my hands on this one very long because it is covered, in, well, I should say filled with larva, so no thanks. Um, very gross, very squishy, but the pore surface is fascinating. Um, it is, the pore surface, like the pores are kind of decurrent, so they're, that means they're traveling down the stipe or the stem. Um, but it is such an interesting bleed, like, I've never seen one like this before. I have no idea what it is. 
the pore surface is very um, almost rich. Almost looks like it's kind of cauliflower-ish. Very interesting. Pretty gross. Um, completely filled with larva. So we're gonna leave that one alone. But I am curious to try to figure out what this is later on. Fascinating. Here's a kind of crazy flush on multiple logs. You can see across this fence here of oysters. The gills are always decurrent down the stipe. Um, decurrent meaning the gills go down almost to the end of the stipe. And they have true gills, meaning not ridges. You can riffle the gills. Definitely very mature. A little more rubbery right now. So these would not be ideal to eat. Um, when they're fresh, the gills are a little more of a pure whitish grayish color, maybe a little pinkish. But what you're seeing is the spore color coming through. So these are almost probably finished, if not already finished, sporulating. So all right, we're gonna wave bye bye to the old elderly oysters. Speaking of elderly, I found some elderly fallen out of, the, out of the tree versions of the Ganoderma aplanatum that I saw at the beginning of our hike. All right, I'm gonna check out what this beautiful flush is. Above oh goodness, these are beautiful. Look at that, how pretty. It's kind of a crazy flush of bolites. I'm gonna have to look a little closer at these. Um, how beautiful, I'm sorry, bolites. These are not bolites. Look at the gills. Get with it, Danny. Oh, they smell amazing. I can smell them from here. I really wanna know what these are now. I actually do not know. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to look a little bit more into this. This is Fomatopsis ochraceae, the ochre banded conch. It's related to the red belted conch, but lacks the red belt along its margin. You can see here that this young ochre belted conch has some gutation occurring, and you can see it's exuding drops of liquid. Experts are not 100% sure why fungi do this, but one theory is that it attracts bugs so spores can stick to their legs and spread as they fly away. So we definitely found some interesting mushrooms today. It's not every day that I get to make a mushroom bleed. <laughs> it's one of my favorites to show on a mushroom walk. So no edibles today, but hey, maybe next time. Thanks for joining me today on Every Which Way. Bye-bye. Naughty. Be nice.